A bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers is demanding that HSBC Bank immediately rectify its actions against Hong Kong activists. The lawmakers are questioning why the financial institution froze or restricted certain accounts belonging to Hong Kong activists, American citizens, independent media outlets and civic groups. The lawmakers sent a letter to the bank asking for, quote, transparent answers. The bipartisan group says HSBC's restrictions also apply to branches in the U.S. According to the letter, people who hold British national overseas passports have been denied access to HSBC pension funds. That's when they leave Hong Kong for the United Kingdom. The lawmakers say that Hong Kong authorities have placed almost the entirety of the city's opposition figures behind bars and denied bail to most as a result of the national security law. And Apple's biggest parts supplier, Foxconn, is one of many businesses suspending operations in the Chinese city of Shenzhen. Authorities have begun enforcing strict lockdown measures as the country records more virus cases so far this year than in all of 2021. Anthony Don Ma has the story. Authorities announced Sunday that all non-essential businesses in the city will suspend operations or implement work-from-home measures, starting today through Sunday. So China is 19 to 20, per, you know, 19 to 20 percent of all manufacturing in the world takes place there, and of that 19 to 20 percent of global manufacturing output, about 10 percent of that is coming out of the Shenzhen region itself. In Shenzhen, officials ordered the city's more than 17 million people to stay at home. The city is a major electronics manufacturing hub. Ross Kennedy, founder of a strategic supply chain analysis firm, says if the lockdown continues, it could affect the global supply chain. Automakers Toyota and Volkswagen are also suspending some operations. Supply chains aren't a light switch, right? You can't, you can shut them off very easily. You can stop sending people to the factories. You can uh, idle production lines, but what you can't do is turn it back on like a light switch, right? So it's very... He says the longer people are barred from going to work, the harder it is will be for businesses to resume normal operations. The delay or the inability of people to get to work or to function is not just a, you know, for every one day delay, uh, there's a day to catch back up. You're talking about for every one day delay, you're talking about two, three, four, five days of extra work to catch up. Uh, so it's an exponential thing. Uh, Kennedy says that if the lockdowns continue for multiple weeks, consumers could feel impacts from the resulting supply chain disruptions. A significant amount of consumer electronic goods sold by Best Buy, Walmart, Target and Amazon come from China. Washington is working to tackle Beijing's intellectual property theft. At the same time, Beijing is turning to Taiwan, poaching talent and stealing trade secrets. That's according to an announcement from Taiwanese authorities. Now the island is fighting back. Here's more. The Investigation Bureau under Taiwan's Ministry of Justice has an announcement. Last week, it reported that nearly 60 people from eight different Chinese enterprises are under investigation. The Bureau said Beijing has used Chinese companies or research centers operating in Taiwan as cover for its real goal, stealing Taiwan's advanced technology and poaching the island's high-tech industry talents. Last year, it happened in 26 different cases. Those led to Taiwan suffering a loss of more than 7 billion U.S. dollars. Also tied to the situation, Chinese semiconductor company Bitmain set up a company in Taiwan, and in just three years, it poached hundreds of engineers from Taiwan. The company then sent that technology to mainland China, dealing a blow to Taiwan's national security. To counter the intellectual property theft, Taiwan authorities have drafted a law to strictly regulate the number of investors coming from mainland China. Li Zhengshou is a military expert at Taiwan's National Policy Research Foundation. He said China knows it can't catch up with Taiwanese or U.S. technology anytime soon. So it steals from them instead to close the gap. The CCP is actually deeply controlled by the West over industrial secrets of high-tech industries. China knows that at least at this stage, it cannot keep up with the pace of Taiwan and European and American technologies. So it hopes to use this way to close the technology gap. How big is the technology gap between Taiwan and China? Taiwan holds the cutting edge. 
thanks to companies like Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the world's largest contract microchip maker. Taiwan also makes the majority of the world's most advanced semiconductors. On the other hand, made-in-China chips are lower quality and less advanced. As of this year, China still hasn't designed or fabricated a substantial number of high-value logic chips. A Chinese hacking group has breached government agencies in the U.S. This is according to a new report by cybersecurity firm Mandiant. The group successfully compromised local government computer networks in at least six U.S. states. The attack happened from May 2021 to February this year. This group is one of the largest Chinese state-sponsored hacking groups right now. NTD's Don Ma has more. A hacking group behind a U.S. government breach is called APT41, and they're actually a Chinese state-sponsored hacking group. We know APT41 has been a state-sponsored group by the CCP for well over a decade. They've been active in penetrating U.S. and allied networks for over 10 years. Uh, And it's been uh, tracked back to the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, which is completely there to act at parcel and act at the direction of the CCP. The CEO of Exact IT Solutions gives us a list of potential information APT41 could have gotten its hands on. This company specializes in discovering hacking breaches and cutting off the hackers. It would include... Uh, any employment data or any information they can get of any uh, government employees, state uh, government employees. Um, And then depending on what government entity they broke into, you know, they could potentially be stealing taxpayer information and things like that. Since APT41 is state-sponsored, it begs the question, is Beijing receiving private Americans' personal information via APT41? Without a doubt, the Chinese government is getting their hands on this information as they collect it. The Chinese government has a massive amount of information collected uh, through these types of activities where they hack into governments. Because APT41 is state-sponsored, does the hack constitute a direct attack from the Chinese Communist Party or CCP on the United States? Casey Fleming, CEO of cybersecurity firm Black Ops Partners, says it does. 100%. It's uh, the CCP has come out for many, many years and said that they're in a war against the United States and it's warfare. And what people don't understand, it's hybrid warfare. Cyber attacks on the U.S. by Chinese actors have happened a number of times in recent years. Some of the attacks have links to Beijing. So then what is Beijing trying to achieve? You have to understand hybrid warfare and what the intent is. The intent is to weaken your enemy so you can take it over, to colonize the United States and each one of the free nations. With regards to Chinese cyber attacks, if you're an everyday American, what should you be worried about right now? You should be worried about your trade secret or your company's trade secrets being stolen. If you have IP, you're being attacked. The the Chinese Communist Party is wargaming against your company to put you out of business and take your business and your intellectual property over to China and produce it to build their economy and to weaken our economy. Fleming says APT41 has been attacking the U.S. and the West for well over a decade. He also warns Americans to be cautious about using Chinese technology. The war in Ukraine is affecting relations between a U.S. software company and a Chinese drone maker. Figma is a fast-growing U.S.-based company that provides vector graphics editing software. The company recently closed off access to its services for the world's number one drone maker. That company is China's DJI. Here's what the provider wrote to DJI. We have learned that DJI is named in U.S. sanctions. As a result, and in compliance with U.S. laws, Figma can no longer provide you with access to our software. That's according to China Fund, a Chinese state-run media company. The move comes as DJI drones are being used in the Russia-Ukraine war. Those details come from the co-founder of connectivity company Blink, IOT platform. The Chinese company is said to have given Russian invaders the advantage. Here's why. The drone company offers the capability to track the location of other drones and the people who operate them. It's called the aeroscope function. But the Chinese company apparently turned that function off for Ukrainians, but left it on for Russians. Again, this is all according to Blink's co-founder. He says the Russians were able to kill Ukrainian drone operators 
but Ukrainians couldn't track their Russian counterparts. But are these claims true? DJI's U.S. communication director offered an explanation for the loss of the aeroscope function. They said the malfunction may be connected to prolonged loss of power or internet. But there's more. On Sunday, reports started surfacing about Russia asking the Chinese regime for military aid. And that includes drones. So it's made the situation more sensitive, but Beijing has denied the allegations. Additionally, there are reports that suggest anti-American or non-state actors have used the Chinese drone company services. Those include ISIS and even a ploy to kill Venezuela's president. Neither FIGNA nor DJI could be reached for comment.